With a large pressure build up inside the fuel tank, a diesel knock when starting her up in the mornings and no DTCs, I've been tasked with finding out what's going on. So let's get into this. I'm going to remove this induction pipe and stuff some foam into the turbo to stop any foreign objects or service advisors falling in there. The rubber glove I'll explain later on. Trust me, it's nothing weird. So I'm going to start by removing this fuel return pipe from the back of the cylinder head to perform my diagnostic testing. In its place I'm fitting an airline into the back of the cylinder head. This pipe will now put 10 bar of air pressure from the workshop air supply into the head which will then fill the common rail with air pressure. This will check the injector sleeves as I believe they could be loose and if this is the case we can stop right now and inform the customer that they need a new cylinder head as they aren't replaceable. In order to do this test we need to do a few more things first. I'm going to remove the rocket cover or as one of my previous apprentices once called it a rocket cover. I can then watch the various rocker levers on the engine as it has to be turned over 720 degrees. By watching each individual intake valve open if an injector sleeve is leaking on the specific cylinder it will fill the cylinder and the intercooler and blow the rubber glove up on the induction pipe by the turbo. See I told you it was nothing weird. With the apprentice squeezed under the vehicle as my winter dad bod is coming along a little too well I got him to take the cover off the bell housing so he can put the special tool on the flywheel and turn the engine over for me. With the apprentice turning the engine over I can now watch the various intake rocker levers open and see which cylinder is possibly causing us an issue. The glove is getting sucked in due to the vacuum caused by the induction stroke from the various cylinders but unfortunately after 720 degrees this test was inconclusive and to be fair I thought the test was a bit shit to be honest but for the time taken it was worth giving it a go. With the test inconclusive I must be more invasive so I'm going to check the injector sleeve height which will require pulling the individual rocker shafts and injectors. To start I need to remove the fuel pipes from the head as the injector tubes push up against the side of the injector body. With the fuel pipes removed enough to allow me to get the injectors out we can undo the rocker shaft assemblies with some Milwaukee's best 3 8 tooling. I've pulled the wiring off the exhaust brake solenoids and put the shafts in order inside the rocker cover for safekeeping. As I made a mess here and all the apprentices have gone into hiding as usual, I better use some brake cleaner on this oil I've spilled. Is there nothing this stuff doesn't do? With the rocker shaft assemblies removed, we can now pull the injectors from the cylinder head. I'm just checking these bolts with the bar to see if any of these bolts are loose. This could potentially identify an issue, but they're all tight. With the injectors now ready to come out, I can screw a bolt into the top of the injector and use this one size fits all slide hammer adapter I've made to pull the injectors. I should have used a bigger slide hammer. With the injectors now loose I can place them in order and check the sleeve heights. With the injectors now removed I've noticed injector 5's body is black. This is something I can now focus my investigation on. I still have some injector sealing rings left in the injector sleeve so I best clean them up. This is DAF's special tool for cleaning the injector sealing ring seats. With the digital vernier caliper I can now measure all the injector sleeve heights. After checking and rechecking the injector sleeve heights and not finding any abnormalities I consulted some DAF technical data and found this cheeky little bulletin which not only states everything that's wrong with the vehicle but also the fault that could be due to a manufacturing defect on the injector sealing rings. This chassis number fell between the chassis reins for this bulletin. With the customer not willing to pay for the injectors to be cleaned I'm going to have to do everything DAF tells you not to do and clean them up with a wire brush so I can get the new sealing rings over the injector tip. If you work for DAF, I didn't do this and you never see me do it. I remove the carbon buildup and place the ceiling rings on all the injectors apart from number 5 as the customer requested that we replace this one. Now I haven't got an injector fetish, the reason I've took a photo of this injector is for reasons that will become clear in a little while. 
I'm lubricating this injector up as we all know the golden rule, no one wants to go in dry. I'm also replacing the injector clamp bolts as they are a one time use item. I'm sending this bolt in by hand so I can feel that it's down correctly before torquing the bolt, rather than going full send with my gun. Might save me from an emotional breakdown later on in the video. These bolts are 30 Newton meters, then 90 degrees. Thank God my dealership invested in one of these snap-on torque wrenches that does both. With the injector now in, we can pop the others in and then the rocker shafts. We can then start building everything back up. I'm letting my apprentice do this as it's about time they did something other than steam cleaning. The torque setting for these rocker shaft assemblies are 50 Newton meters, then 90 degrees. I'm just wiping down these valve bridges and cylinder head components as they've been getting covered in dust and god knows what. So much for a clinical working environment. Again, I'm seating these by hand before talking them up. With everything back in, we can now start to put the fuel system back together. Another torque sequence required here of 27 newton meters and 30 degrees for the fuel pipes into the head. And then it's 15 newton meters and 30 degrees for the fuel rail. Here we go, the Backstreet Boys are here helping me out with the valve clearances. Not sure how much helping they're going to do, but hopefully they'll have a valuable lesson from this. I've got them doing two cylinders each, one adjusting the locking nut on the rocker levers, one doing the valve clearances with the feeler blades, and the other one turning the engine over. After two cylinders, I rotated them to keep them engaged and also they can see the whole task. It went well overall, apart from one getting stuck trying to climb over the engine, one managing to turn the ratchet off instead of on when turning the engine over, and then then having an argument about how many 120 degrees is in 720 degrees. This is the future of our industry guys, may God have mercy on us all. With the valve clearances complete, we can put the rocker cover back on refit the elbow to the turbo and rebuild the fuel system. Time for the moment of truth. We're cranking the engine to get the fuel up to the injectors and see if the apprentices have done me proud and done the valve clearances correctly. With the engine now running, we need to do the technical bits. We can scan the QR code that I took a picture of before this will then update the injector trim code for number 5 injector and it will program it into the PCI ECU. And this is where that photo comes in. 
Quicker than an angry Aldi checkout lady, this allows us to program the injector into the vehicle and not type out the 30 digit code manually. Now we're done with the computer, it's time to rip this truck up the road and make sure she's ready to go back to work. When we get back, we can make sure we've checked for leaks and we can then return the vehicle to the customer. As always, if you've enjoyed watching this video, please give me a like, a subscribe, maybe even check out some of my other videos and I'll see you in the next one.